Did you know that a battle of the Revolutionary War was fought in our backyard? Are you interested in learning about early American craftsmanship? Well, then this story is for you. The warrior-run Fort Freeland Heritage Society is committed to educating the public about the rich history and culture of central Pennsylvania. Warrior-run Fort Freeland Heritage Society was formed about 30 years ago, and it was formed to, to conserve the culture of this valley and to teach that culture to other people. It was started by a group of teachers, and that has always been their goal, education, and, um, and preservation of the, the culture that we have in this valley that is so rapidly disappearing. The Warrior Run Fort Freeland Heritage Society is charged with maintaining both the Warrior Run Church and the Howard Sloat House. The group's largest event is Heritage Days. Held in early October, the weekend is full of demonstrations, lectures, reenactments, and crafts to help visitors gain an understanding of the lives of early settlers. We stopped by while members of the Heritage Society were busy setting up for the event, which takes place on the grounds of Fort Freeland and the Howard Sloat House behind the Warrior Run High School. The property is owned by the Warrior Run School District, but is managed by the Warrior Run Fort Freeland Heritage Society. Rich Nornhold gave me a fantastic lesson on the history of the house, as well as the Battle of Fort Freeland. This house, it's called the Howard Sloat House, was built in 1829. And it was built on land that was originally the Hower farm. And of course, when, when John Hower died in 1826, the farm was divided in two. And this part, what we call the school farm today, was given to their daughter, Susanna, who it was given really as a wedding present. And then she married James Sloat. He was a contractor in the area. He built the Warrior Run Church. So the same person who built this house built the Warrior Run Church. The Howard Sloat House, however, was not the first house to be built on the property. The original settlers were the Freelands from New Jersey. They purchased the land from the Penn family and built their house in 1772. Along with the house, the Freelands owned several mills that were powered by the nearby Warrior Run Creek. The Freeland family, or Vreeland as they called it, uh, lived here and it was that, that family that built the fort. and was their house, which was fortified. Uh, my understanding typically of, you know, a fort is a military installation. This was not necessarily a it, military installation. That's right, because of the mills. All the neighbors in the whole region were used to coming here to have their, their flower ground and to have their lumber sawn at, at the sawmill. And so it made sense for them to come here and, and fortify the the Freeland house. And we call it Fort Freeland, but you're perfectly right. It, it was just a house. Now you're probably wondering why the early settlers felt the need to build a fort. During 1778 and 1779, there were numerous Indian incursions into the frontier. The one thing that this area has is the frontier history. During the Revolutionary War, this was the breadbasket for George Washington's troops. And the British understood the strategic importance of this area. And as a consequence, they sided with the Iroquois Indians and they wanted them to do as much harm to the frontier regions as they could, which would take a lot of the food away from Washington's army. Fearing for their lives, about 140 inhabitants took refuge at Fort Freeland through the winter of 1778 and into 1779. In July of 1779, 300 Seneca Indians, uh, Tories, and perhaps even some regular British descended on the fort here and unfortunately for us, we weren't able to survive that battle. The battle occurred in two phases. With a lack of ammunition and significantly outnumbered, the settlers in the fort surrendered. Hawkins Boone, believed to be a cousin of Daniel Boone, lived at Fort Boone near Milton. Boone and his company from the Milton area had heard the shooting and they rushed north. And so after the initial battle was over, they rushed in to try to save the day, not realizing how many Indians were here. So that part of the battle happened after the initial phase. When it was all over, 21 Americans had died and all the remaining men were taken as British prisoners of war. The women and children moved south to Fort Augusta in what is now Sunbury. One of the highlights of Heritage Days is the reenactment of the Battle of Fort Freeland. 
Another focal point for the Warrior Run Fort Freeland Heritage Society is educating people about early American craftsmanship. Demonstrations at Heritage Days cover everything from rope making and blacksmithing to spinning and cooking. The masters interact with visitors to teach and answer questions about their particular craft. Every time you brought the handle up, this would go down. Every time you brought the handle down, this would come up. And when this would go down your water, the water would come up through this copper. What he's doing is explaining how they made bricks back in the 1800, 1900 time frame. Oh, this is yellow clay you dig out of the ground. If we used to dig down two feet here, we'd probably hit a layer of yellow clay. The Warrior Run Fort Freeland Heritage Society sponsors an apprenticeship program as a way of keeping the early American skills alive and well. We decided to train some younger folks with the people who knew the skill here at Heritage Days and they would eventually take over and become the master at that skill or trade. Apprentices are required to attend Heritage Days with their master, but the training doesn't stop there. They are building a portfolio year-round. They are collecting ticket stubs, they're collecting information, brochures, pamphlets from the places they visit, and eventually they have a portfolio to present to their master. The program is intended to mimic the process a young person in early America would have gone through to learn a trade. Once they spend a few years being an apprentice, they uh, gain experience and when their master feels that they are experienced enough, they can become a journeyman. At that point, they need to find their own apprentice and continue honing their skills and creating a masterpiece. Their master can then recommend them to the Heritage Society to be named a master. At that point, they are free of any ties to their master, and they can, theoretically, they could go out and have their own shop. In order to enter the apprentice program, you must become a member of the Warrior Run Fort Freeland Heritage Society. It is open to folks of all ages. Anyone willing to learn about a historic trade or skill, uh, preferably something Pennsylvania German or something from this area, is welcome to attend, welcome to become an apprentice. Many of the people who participate in Heritage Days start their preparations early. When we stopped by on Friday, they were already hard at work making apple butter. This batch was just about ready to have the sugar and spices added to it, but it must be continuously stirred to keep it from burning. Somebody thought it would be fun to put me to work for a little while. Twice around the outside, once around the, in the middle. That's how you stir the apple butter kettle. Oh my gosh, he has Twice a line. around the outside, down through the middle. That's how you stir the apple butter kettle. <laughs> you know I'm going to be saying. That. In addition to apple butter, there is a lot to taste at Heritage Days. Cabbage, or is the cabbage done? Or um, we're working on it in the. We're waiting for the cider to finish so that we can, mm, or the you. sausage to finish so that we can do the cabbage next. Mm. So oh, okay. I don't know. Enjoying it goes in Okay. Mmm, that's really good. It is. It's very good. Once you've had your fill of tasty treats, you can head over to the Warrior Run Church. The present structure is the third Warrior Run Church. The first was burned by Seneca Indians in 1778. The second, a log building constructed near the current site, burned mysteriously in 1833. This brick structure was built in 1835. During Heritage Days, it is home to a Civil War encampment. By traveling only a quarter of a mile from Fort Freeland, you can pass through 70 years of history. Information on membership in the Warrior Run Fort Freeland Society, their apprentice mentor program, and the dates for the 2011 Heritage Days is available on their website at www.freelandfarm.org. For In Your Neighborhood, I'm Jennifer Wakeman. Thanks for watching.